the topic that we will be looking at today God the creator owner and Lord of all God the creator owner and Lord of all father in heaven we pause a moment to acknowledge you as the creator of heaven and earth today we remind ourselves who we are and so we ask that you will bring a word to us and as we listen help us to put them into practice touch my brain cells forgive me of my sins in Jesus name I pray amen God the creator owner and Lord of all we are living in the final days of human history the events we witness day after day are a perfect fit for the biblical statement regarding the final days. The world is facing all kinds of crisis. A tremendous crisis has affected our values, our health, and even our families. And that is without even mentioning the financial crisis that has caused even some of the most courageous to shake. And those of us who have the United States as one of the perfect country, people will do all kinds of things to get to the United States. If what is happening there continue a few days longer, the entire country will be shut down. Right now, many are without pay. In the context of such worrisome and overwhelming situation, God's people should keep faithful and loyal to biblical principles. Since God's faithful stewards his people is unconditional. The Lord expects that we all will be faithful in all aspects of our daily lives. So whether we are Christians or whether we are not Christians, we are stewards. God will make that distinction. In the final analysis, whether we are faithful or whether we are unfaithful. So we will have to decide which side we are on. Our body temple, our talent, our time, our treasures, four areas that makes the complete man. Every day we get up, whatever we do or whatever we say, it falls in these four areas. And don't believe we are answerable to the conference president. Don't believe we are answerable to the pastor. Don't believe we are answerable to the elders or to any members. We will have to answer to Almighty God. It was only Sunday when we went to Dovecot. We were the last 
funeral to leave out of Dovecot. And when we leave, myself and Brother Chaplin, we were talking. And it dawned on me that everybody who supported the funeral, when Elder Carey said the final words, every single person leave that spot. I did not hear anybody says, I am going to stay. Everybody left. So when we are going to make a decision for Jesus, it is between me and God. Not between me and my friends or my relatives. It is between me and Almighty God. And so we are all answerable to God. The Bible tells us in Psalm 24 and verse 1, and you can turn your Bibles. I am reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord's, and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein. So every single thing that we have, every single thing that we possess, belongs to Almighty God. And the ladies can tell you, they have the answer more than I. When every time someone comes into this world, you tell me what they bring with them. I have attended many funeral services, and I have observed very carefully that those who have cars, those who have houses, those who have lands, those who have money, whenever time they go to Dovecot or Medores or Mapen or the funeral, their, their family plot, the only thing I see going down is a casket. So when we come here on planet Earth, we take nothing. And when we exit, we take absolutely nothing. So whatever God blessed us with, we should manage to the best of our ability. So the Earth belongs to God and everything that is within it, they belongs to Almighty God. And so we use them to the best of our ability. God is the creator of heaven and earth. He tells us in Genesis 1 and verse 1, he says, In the, in the, it is God who do what? Create the heavens and the earth. It is God, not man. So we must not be too concerned when we see men doing all kind of things as if they are going to destroy the earth. Men will never ever able to go far than where God allows them to go. God is in control. Amen. So don't send up your blood pressure over things that you cannot correct. I was in the vestry area this morning and I see Sister Candice Myrie. She passed the door and I noticed the expression 
on her face. And when she was passing back, I called her. And I said, you know, is so your face when I look when you're inviting the visitors? And she said, I am stressed. <laughs> Can you imagine that? So if she is stressed, what about me? I will not tell you what she said. And so, God is in control of planet Earth. And so we need not worry and we need not fret. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. Turn in your Bibles. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Right now you have certain people on planet earth who do not regard the Bible as God inspired word. You know why? They cannot search and find out almighty God. And so they will tell you that the Bible is white man book. And they give us to hold us down. But if we were to search and find out God from A to Z, then he would not be God. So God is the creator of heaven and earth. And we cannot search to find out God from A to Z. What is evidence to us? Let us accept it and move on. Because we know that there is a God. We know that he is the creator of heaven and earth. And so we accept and we move on. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Exodus 19 and verse 5. The Bible says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Amen. We see how simple it is. All we need to do is to obey Almighty God. Amen. Elder Vernal always used this example when he preached at funeral services. He says, can you imagine if everybody on planet Earth were to keep God's Ten Commandments. Can you imagine what planet Earth would be like? Just imagine. So God is saying to us as his people, all we need to do is to obey. But very sad, as God's steward, sometimes even when we see the truth as plain as day, we turn it over and we turn it over and we turn it over and we question it. God 
is depending on us as his steward to be obedient. And when we are obedient to him, then we will receive the blessings that he has in store for us. Numbers 3 and verse 13. The Bible says, Because all the firstborn are mine, on the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified to myself all the first born in Israel, both man and beast. They shall be mine. I am the Lord. So when it comes to sanctification, it is not from man but is from Almighty God. God is the one that sanctifies. God is the one that makes us special. And if we are special, and if we believe that we are special as God's steward, then we must act in that way. Don't believe that we are any ordinary people. We are special because we are sanctified by Almighty God. And he expects us to obey him in all aspects of our lives. Psalm 50. Turn your Bibles and we go to verse 10 through 12. Psalm 50 verses 10 through 12. The Bible says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and all its fullness. This is our creator of heaven and earth. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. All we need to do is to have faith in Almighty God. God says if he, if he were hungry, he would not tell us. Why? He know where to go and get things to supply his needs. That is the God we serve. All we need to do is to go to Almighty God. It doesn't matter the situation we find ourselves in. Go to God first. Sometimes we go to our relatives. We go to our friend. And when that friend or that relative cannot help us, it is only then we turn to Almighty God. But our first move should be to our creator of heaven and earth. And then he will show us, he will tell us where to turn. Many times it's because we lack faith. God is depending on us to have faith in him. Faith as small as a mustard seed. If we exercise in our creator of heaven and earth, then we will see wonders in our lives in 20. 19. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8. Turn your Bibles. The Bible says, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, 
says the Lord of hosts. So when it comes to money, God owns all the money in the universe. And that is why it is very important how we spend money. Don't spend money on that which is not necessary. Because we owe everything to Almighty God. We are steward. And if we are steward, we must be good managers. Because we will have to answer to Almighty God when he comes a second time. So let us do all we can while we can to glorify his name. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4. The Bible says, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. So God is in control. So no matter what men will do, all they will do is destroy the body. God is the one who blow breath, not man. And he is in control. So all we have to do is to put him first in everything, in every aspect of our lives. Sad to say, many times we put human beings first and we leave God second and third. But God is counting on us as his steward to put him first in our lives. First and foremost, God must be in our lives. Isaiah 43 and verse 1. The Bible says, But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who forms you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. All of us belongs to Almighty God. Some people will tell you that I am my own big man. Or I am my own big woman. I do as I please. We have a next guest coming. We belong to Almighty God. We owe everything to Him. We are answerable. To God, our creator of heaven and earth. So don't believe we can do any and everything and get away with it. Whatsoever we do, we should do it to the honor and glory of Almighty God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we go to verse 20. The Bible says, For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So when it comes to our body, we must treat it to the best of our ability 
what we eat, what we drink, what we wear. What we eat, what we drink, what we wear. Many of the sickness in our world today, it is caused from what we partake in our body. If you should talk to those who own motor vehicles, each vehicle carries a manual and it tells you exactly how to treat that motor vehicle if you are going to get the best use of it. So it is with our body. God has given us a manual and we must consult that manual in order to treat our body to the best of our ability. And that manual is his words. He tells us plainly how to treat our body. So the Bible says, for you are you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so, all of us, as God's steward, we owe it to him to do the best of our ability as we go from day to day. God has laid his hand upon all things, both man and his possessions, for all belong to him. He says, I am the owner of the world. The universe is mine. And I require you to consecrate to my service the first fruits of all that I, through my blessings, have caused to come into your hands. This tribute he demands as a token of our loyalty to him. Turn your Bibles. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9. And those who don't mark it in your Bibles, mark it. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9. It says... Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. There's a notion amongst us as God's people. I am not going outside the Seventh-day Adventist church. When it comes to supporting God's cause, there is a notion that if we are not working, we cannot do so or we are unable to do so. But the Bible is reminding us that we must honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so whether we are working or whether we are not working once we receive something it is on it is on increase and it's who give us 
Almighty God. So none of us will be able to outgive God. None of us. God in creating human beings the Bible says we are fearful and wonderfully made. This body that we have it is not by chance that we go to our beds, we sleep, and we get up, we go to and from our place of business, and we return home. It is the mercy of God that is keeping us. None of us knows what is going on on the inside. None of us. Sometimes those who drive will drive their car to and from their place of business and they go home and they park it and everything is all right. And they get up in the morning ready and everything to go to work. And when they get inside and turn, there is nothing. Because something was going bad from a long time. And it just take them home to park. And while they park, that part went. That is the same way the human body works. None of us knows what is going on on the inside. So it is Almighty God who blessed us with his possessions so we should not treat God as if we are doing him a favor we are not doing God any favor so whatever he blessed us with we should also support his cause God is the bountiful giver of all good and he desires that there shall be an acknowledgement on the part of the receiver of these gifts that provide for every necessity of the body and the soul God demands only his own he demands what only his own what a God we serve. Those of us who work, the government makes sure he takes out what he claims that belongs to him before we get it. You know why? The government don't trust us. Because the government said, boy, if it come in my hand, then he will not get his portion. So he makes sure that he takes his portion before I get it. But God is not like man. Because I said earlier on, it is not me, neither it is the pastor or the conference president will decide who is faithful and who is unfaithful. It is God. And so I will have to decide which side I want to be on. Whether a faithful steward or an unfaithful steward. Whether a manager that will manage God's resources to the best 
of my ability or a manager that will phone warning when God return. Our scripture reading, Job chapter 41. And I will read verse 11. 41 verse 11. The Bible says, Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. God is the owner of everything. God is the sustainer of us all. So don't believe that we are doing God a favor. I said earlier on that Most of us, we put man in front of Almighty God. And I don't know where God fall, whether he comes second, third, or fourth. But I am encouraged in all of us today as his steward. God is the creator of heaven and earth. God is the owner of everything. We answer to him. And so let us put God first in everything that we do. Just as how we have our business to take care of. And we take care of it to the T. God is depending on us to take care of his business more than how we take care of his. Because let me remind us. The health and the strength that we have to go from day to day to do our business, it belongs to Almighty God. And when it comes to Monday to Friday, we move with strength and vigor. But when it comes to God's holy day and his time, we behave as if God is begging us a favor. God is not asking me for a favor. He already gave me the benefit of the doubt. And this is the God we serve. He gave me six 24 hours. And he asks me for one. And when it comes to the one that he asks me for, sometimes I hardly give him two or three hours out of his time. God is going to hold us responsible. And it's not a matter if he's going to hold us responsible. He is going to hold us responsible. At my workplace, they make sure that they give us strict guidelines. If you're late, one time, they might overlook it. They're not going to say anything to you because you continue coming. If you're late two times, 
and you said nothing, then they're going to warn you. You're late again, and you said nothing. They are going to give you a written warning. You're late again, and you said nothing. Then it's about weird. You believe this place belongs to you. They will suspend you. And when you come back, you ever hear they say you're walking on chalk line? If you continue to be late, they will fire you. We are saying God can fire us. So I am my own big man and big woman. I do what I want to do. But let me remind us, if you did not know, God is a God of record. You believe is man only have record and when we study scripture, some of us take technology and put it in front of God. God is not so care about technology. Because if you notice what God deals with, book. So God is not going to put anything on a cell phone. Cell phone can't last. The Bible says his record is in a what? Book. And each aspect of our lives is recorded. And God will use that to determine whether we are safe or whether we are lost. The opportunity he makes available. He sent his son to die for our sins. And it's for you and I to accept and live up to that standard. Don't believe we can bring down God to our standard. A lot of us set a standard and say, God, you better meet this standard. This is my standard that I have set, and then you better conform to that. That is not how God works. God have a standard, and is not a might, or is not a may. We must reach his standard. Not in my own strength, or not in my own will, but all we have to do is to rely on his strength. Be willing and obedient to follow his will. It is simple. The Bible says all we have to do is to obey. That's all he's asking us. To obey. So in 2019. Yes. We have faltered in 2018. And God is a God who do not treat us as we deserve. We have come over into 2019 let us as his steward be faithful in all areas of our lives all areas he is depending on us to do the best of our ability all we need to do Trust and obey.